guys, it's Catherine with Naptime Alternative and welcome back to my channel. I know I have been gone for a really long time, like it's been months and that absence was completely unplanned. I was going to do this whole explanation of why I've been gone and my plans for the future, but I'm just going to spare you all of that because I don't think most of you would be interested. And I'm just going to dive right in to some of the new features in Procreate 5. Now, there are already tons of videos on YouTube about Procreate 5. And I'm sure most of you have already seen those. If you are familiar with older versions of Procreate, it's not going to take much for you to adjust to the new features in Procreate 5. It's still very familiar. My initial plan was to record another digital planning basics video where I'll walk you through every feature. But I just released a digital planning basics video for Procreate 4.2 a few months ago, and it's still so relevant. It's still so useful. So if you're new to Procreate, I recommend checking out that video if you're wanting to do your digital planning in Procreate and then coming to this video so you can see some of the new features. Because the interface, while some of the appearance has changed, it's still just very, very similar. So many things are done the same way. So before I get started, I just wanted to apologize for a few things. I know my desk looks yellow. It's actually bright white, but the lighting in here is absolutely terrible. I have a new film set up and I'm still trying to get used to it. I'm trying to figure out the lighting situation. I'm using a bunch of natural light right now and it's really cloudy outside, so that's not helping the situation. And also, I just wanted to acknowledge the fact that my nails look horrible. I know they look horrible. You don't have to leave me a comment about it. I swear so many people comment about my nails. Just full disclosure, um, I'm a germaphobe. I germex and wash my hands a lot more than the average person, and it makes it nearly impossible to keep a fresh manicure. Like, within a day of painting my nails, it's already chipping off, and I am not going to stop washing my hands and germexing. So, I mean, it is what it is. So, in today's video, I'm just going to go over a few of the new features that I think are really exciting for anybody that's like myself that likes to do their digital planning in Procreate. There are so many more new features other than what you see listed here. These are just the ones that I find the most useful for digital planning in Procreate. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is the color wheel. So a lot about the color wheel is still the same pretty much. Um, when you select the color wheel, you'll see right off the bat, one of the new features is that we now have a color history, which I absolutely love. I can't tell you how many times I have been doing something in my digital planner and I switch colors and I'm like, oh crap, I want to go back to this other color. And yes, you can go back to another color just by pressing and holding on that color and then that pops up and then it will change your color. But there have been a few times where maybe I did a watercolor texture and it doesn't pick up the exact hex code that I'm wanting. So this is very useful. It gives you 10 of your previously used colors and I just love that new feature. That was one that I wouldn't have thought about or I wouldn't have requested, but now that it's there, I love that it's there. So many of these things down here are still the same. You've still got your disc, you've still got your classic, you've still got your value, and you've still got all of your palettes. But you'll see down here, there's a new feature called Harmony. This is really useful if you're filling out your digital planner page and you want to come up with a cohesive color scheme, this is going to help you with that. So you've got your color wheel right here, and right here are all of your options for different harmonies. So let's say I wanted to match this pink right here. I can choose between all of these different harmonies to come up with a color scheme. So if I wanted a complementary color, I could select that. There's split complementary. There's analogous. There's triadic. And there's tetradic. And once again, I just love that they have added that feature. I wouldn't have thought of it and I wouldn't have requested it, but it's there and that is going to be really useful for just building your color schemes. So one of the most convenient new features for the color wheel is that we can now have a floating menu. And to use the floating menu, all you have to do is go to your color dot and this little line right here, take it and drag it, 
and you're good to go. So you still have all of your settings. It still works the same way. It's just on a smaller scale and this will stay on your screen as you're working. So you can even access your color palettes, which I absolutely love. So let's just select this color and I can draw and my color palettes are all right there. So I can easily switch colors without having to tap up here and then find the color. It's just so much more convenient. So there are also a couple of new useful features with your selections. Making a selection still works the same way as the previous versions where you go to this ribbon, that's what I call that tool, and you can choose between automatic, freehand, rectangle, or ellipse. And one of the major differences is there is now the option to copy and paste rather than duplicate, but it pretty much does the same thing. Let's do a freehand selection and let me make sure I'm on this layer. I am. Okay, so we're going to do a freehand selection and let's say I wanted to copy the word clone. I could just draw this shape around it and then instead of duplicating it, I would just hit copy and paste and you'll see that it pasted it onto its own layer. So it works the exact same way as duplicating. Another new feature in selections is that you have the ability to save selections. And I actually really like this feature, but I feel like they could do more with it. So let's say there's something on your canvas, on your planner page that you want to select and possibly, so let's say there's something on your planner page that you want to select and there's a chance you'll want to make that exact same selection again. You can do that by making the selection. We're just gonna go with clone again. And then going to this heart where it says save and load and hitting this plus sign and it saved that selection. So now I can just get rid of that selection and see, it didn't do anything, I didn't copy and paste it, but now let's say I wanted to copy and paste it, I can go back to my selection, hit this heart, hit my saved selection right here, and it has selected clone for me, and now I could copy and paste it if I wanted to. The only thing that I wish they would do different is I wish that they would give you the ability to move that saved selection because that would be so useful when you're cropping sticker sheets. If you just had to do like one rectangle, but it worked for several of the stickers, you could just move that selection. That would be amazing. Maybe they'll do that in the future, but for now, the selection stays wherever you make it. You can't move that selection. If you want to delete your saved selections, all you do is go to that heart and then drag towards the left and hit delete. Okay, clone is a new feature that I absolutely love, but it's going to take some getting used to in terms of making it work correctly. Um, but it is so handy, especially for digital planning. Let's say you have written a word in your planner and instead of writing that word over and over again, you just want to be able to stamp it. All you have to do is make sure you're on the layer that has whatever you want to clone. Go to your wand and select clone. Now you'll see this dot right here. Take your pencil in the center of that dot and drag it over whatever you want to clone. And then this is where you can select a brush size and this is where you would adjust the strength, which is pretty much the opacity. You can also click here and select whatever kind of brush you want to use. And I haven't played around with this too much. Um, I'm just gonna select a basic brush, but I haven't played around with trying it out with different brushes. So I'm not really sure how that affects it yet. I'm not gonna lie to you. So I went back and I selected the medium airbrush just because that or it's the medium hard airbrush, just because that's what it automatically selected. I think it was either the medium hard or possibly the medium brush. And I'm gonna make my brush size pretty big. And now you'll see it's like copying the canvas. But if I wanted to make that smaller, let's say I just wanted the word clone, which is ideally what you would want, I can just copy the word clone wherever I want. You'll see it did copy some of the stuff above it, um, but you can just erase that if you want. 
This is really hard to get used to. I have used it a few times and I'm still kind of struggling with it a little bit. Um, just getting the settings right is hard to get used to, but it's one of those features I want to keep playing around with and I know I'll love it once I get the hang of it. Also, you can two finger tap to undo whatever you want just in case you mess up because I've messed up a million times trying to get used to that feature. Okay, now another really cool feature are the new brush settings. Since the release of Procreate 5 is still so new, there are not that many new style brushes available to purchase yet. I did upload some for the rim tier on Patreon, but the color dynamics of the new brushes are amazing. I'm just gonna hide this so we can play around with it for a minute. You now have the ability to do several different things, more things than I can even list in this video with the color dynamics of your brushes. I'm just gonna show you the brush set that I created for the rim tier just as a quick example and then we're gonna get into the actual color dynamics on the brush settings. So one of the brushes that I released is this Rainbow Obsession. Now this brush changes color slightly every time you pick up and put your pencil back down. So I have this light pink color selected. This is the first streak. This is the second streak. And you see I'm not changing colors this is just changing colors every time I pick up and put my brush back down. This trippy setting, I'll make this bigger, is just a series of different colors. I'm sorry, my husband is moving something upstairs. This is just a series of different colors within the lettering. So it just adds a really cool effect. It almost looks streaky, which I love. So this lovely brush, it has a slight color shift when you change pressure, but the color shift heavily depends on the color that you choose. It works better with darker colors. So you'll see I have like this dark purple right here selected. And right now I have light pressure and then I press down and it kind of lightened the shade of blue. This is showing up more blue than purple. And then once again, light pressure, more pressure, light pressure, more pressure, light pressure. And this is just really fun to play around with because it's kind of predictable. I tried to make this one kind of predictable in terms of like if you select a color, you're gonna get a color that's close to what you've selected, but it's not exact. And I really like this shift of this purple. So that one's just a slight color shift. So this surprise obsession is one that you don't really know what color you're gonna get when you put your pencil down. I tried to keep it kind of close just because there are a few brushes out there that I've tried that I love, but you get a totally different color. You can select pink and you're gonna get green, or you can select blue and you might get like a yellow shade. So I tried to keep it kind of close um, with this surprise setting, but you'll see I selected pink and I'm getting purple. And this also has a slight color shift as well, depending on your pressure. So it does a little of both. This red gives pink and let's see, let's try green. This green gives like kind of a weird, I'm not really a big fan of that color, but you just play around with it. That's why I called it surprise because you don't really know what color you're going to get. Okay, so now let's go into the actual settings. I am going to duplicate my set of brushes from my letter planner brush pack so I can mess with the brushes without worrying about messing with my actual original set. So I've duplicated this set and now to go into my brush settings, I'm just going to select it and then come down here to color dynamics. So one of the amazing features in Procreate 5 is that you can now play around with your brush over here. I've noticed a little bit of a bug though on this test area because you can write, well, it's not doing it now. I was doing this the other night. I was playing around with it when I was creating those brushes and it would erase half of the stuff that I would try to write. But if you wanna clear your test area, you click right here where it says drawing pad and just select 
clear drawing pad, you can reset your brush settings, and you can test your brush in different colors, which I highly recommend if you're playing around with color dynamics. So, this color jitter right here, that is what I use to create the trippy brush that I just showed you. So, when you adjust the hue, let's do a streak so you can see. Oh, there it goes. See, it erased some of it. You can just do a streak and then play around with what colors it offers. So, that's with my hue almost all the way up. You can't even tell that I have a pink shade selected. But it gives all sorts of colors. Then you can adjust saturation, and it's going to show you what all of this does right here. So, you don't have to write every time you change a setting, it's going to adjust whatever you already have on your test area. You can adjust lightness, you can adjust darkness, you can adjust secondary color, and just have fun with all of that stuff. Let's reset all brush settings. It's not letting me. Okay, so now we're just going to move all this back down to zero and play around with some more settings. This time I'm going to do a blue streak. So the stroke color jitter, this is one that changes the color of your brush every time you pick up your pencil. So you can do tons of different streaks and you're going to get different colors each time. So you can mess around with the hue and saturation and the lightness, darkness, and the secondary color. This is how I created the rainbow brush. Color pressure. This is where you can change the color with pressure. So, let's adjust the hue a little bit. You'll see I have the color blue selected, but I adjusted the hue. So now, every time I change my pressure, the color changes. But I adjusted the hue so much that just selecting the color blue, like it makes it pink. So, that, is something to play around with too. If you wanna keep it as close to the original color as possible, just make that hue a little less and it'll keep it pretty close. Now color tilt, I have not played around with much at all. But part of the fun of this is that you can create these really fun artistic brushes that are fun to play around with, especially if you're into digital lettering or if you just want to have fun in your planner. Um, you could spend hours and hours playing around with all of these settings and come up with all kinds of brushes. There are also several other new settings within your brush creator that you can play around with. I'm not going to get into all of those because I'm not like an expert at creating Procreate brushes and I'm not even going to pretend <laughs> that I am. So, uh, that is just something that you can keep playing around with. I just think that these color shift and color changing things are so fun to play with. But at the same time, I don't love this feature as much as I thought that I would because so many of the settings change the color of the original brush, and I don't like that. I want to be able to select pink and know that I'm going to have a pink brush. I just want it to do some cool color shifts or something like that. Does that make sense? Like, I wish that they would have added the feature. I don't mean to sound like I'm complaining, by the way, because I know that they're very open to suggestions, and maybe they'll do this in the future, but I wish that they would have added the feature to select a color and, like, build off of that one color, if that makes sense, rather than just messing around with the hue and saturation to adjust your color. Because you might find a setting that looks good with, let's say, a shade of pink, but then you switch to green and it looks terrible. So, this is really tricky, but really cool at the same time. So, the other feature is that you can now combine brushes, and it is so fun to play around with. There is a trick to this that I just learned. Apparently, all the brush combinations that I experimented with in the past were not already combined brushes. But if you want to combine a brush with another brush, you have to make sure the brush that you want to combine isn't already combined, if that makes sense. So to double check that, like let's go to this old beach brush. 
you can click on it and you can see this actually has two brushes right here. So you would not be able to further combine that brush with another brush. But this Laura Puna, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Um, so we're just going to call it the L brush from here on out. But this brush right here, you can double click on it. There's no brushes up there. So that means it is a single brush and it is available to combine with other brushes. So this has a really nice texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that brush. And you don't have to do that. I'm just doing that because I don't want to lose the original brush. And then I'm going to drag it out here. And then I'm going to go to my letter planner brush bundle and I'm going to drag it and drop it here and you want it to be above whatever brush you want to combine it with so in this case I want to combine it with this lettering brush um, the reason you want your textured brush on top is because you want that texture to show if you put it on the bottom that texture will not show so to combine this textured brush with this lettering brush you're going to select your texture brush and then you're going to select your lettering brush by swiping to the right and then hit combine and now it's combined those brushes so now we've got a textured lettering brush i actually love this brush <laughs> um i didn't think i was going to love it as much as i do uh, and now you can go into your brush settings and you can see the two brushes right here and you can individually change the settings of each of the brushes as well. So I want to up the streamline on this brush and you can change the blend mode. So right now they're in a normal combined mode, but you can go to multiply, you can go to darken, color burn, linear burn. Here's normal, lighten, color dodge, overlay, hard mix. There's so many um, that are fun to play around with. So I like the look of multiply. And then you can go into your color dynamics. You can only do that for the first brush, not the second brush. But there's a lot of settings to play around with. Basically, you can create so many different kinds of brushes you could basically spend hours and hours and hours and hours in the brush library and still not unlock all of the possibilities that you have in the new brush library. Um, it's just really fun to play with. The last new feature that I wanted to show you in case you wanted to create brushes for your planner is that you can now go to About This Brush and you can insert a picture, you can put your name, and you can sign it. And that makes it impossible for somebody to steal your brush. So if you create a brush that you want to sell or even distribute for free, you can fill all this in and nobody else can take credit for that brush or try to sell your brush, which is amazing because there are people out there, unfortunately, that try to take credit for work that is not theirs. And this prevents them from doing that. Um, you can also do that for your canvases now. You can go to your wrench tool, go to canvas, go to canvas information and go to about this artwork and you can put your picture, you can sign it, you can put your name so nobody can steal any artwork that you distribute either. So I hope this video flowed well. I was kind of nervous about recording it because I was trying to find a way to cover all of it, um, but ultimately I just decided to make this video for people that are already familiar with Procreate that just want to know about some of the new useful features that I think will be great for digital planning. Uh, like I said, I'm not an expert when it comes to creating Procreate brushes, so that's why I didn't get too detailed on that. I just kind of wanted to go over some of the basics of the new features. Please give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would appreciate it so much. Somehow, in being gone for months, I managed to go from a little under 5,000 subscribers to now over 7,000 subscribers, which was so exciting for me to come back to. So thank you so much for that. Check out my Patreon page which is an exclusive digital planning club where you get all kinds of fun bonuses each month. And if you sign up for the rim tier, which there are limited seats for the rim tier, but if you sign up for the rim tier for the month of December, you will get all of these brushes that I showed you earlier. 
in three different styles. So you've got the ones that do the color shift, you've got the rainbow brush in three different styles. It's just a lot of fun to play around with. I had a lot of fun making those brushes. Let me know if you have any questions, just leave a comment. I don't always see all of my comments. I try to check my videos regularly, but I sometimes miss a comment or two. So if I don't answer your question on YouTube, you can join my Facebook group. It's just called Naptime Alternative. I'll put a link to it in the video description and you can ask questions there. There are so many helpful people in that group. And yeah, I'm excited to be back with new videos. I have some fun things planned. At least I think they're fun. And I hope you guys really enjoy what's to come. I'll see you guys in the next video.